Okay, cool. I've got all my chores done. I've got myself some wine. Let's record some more. Okay, let's write the script so boy voice doesn't have to work too hard. I stopped halfway through a scene last time. I can't remember why I did that. I remember being really embarrassed about something, but... I can't remember why. Oh well, I'm sure it's not too important. Let's have a quick look. Okay, Lena and Gary were talking about... Okay. When I was a kid, about four or five, there was this old fortune teller woman who had a store in the town square. I remember her closing her store for a few days every month, like clockwork. When I asked her why, she said it was that time of the month and not to worry because it was completely natural. So that's how I learnt that women can't use magic then. But there's one thing I don't understand. Uh, yeah, what's that? Why do magic women have a time of the month when they can't do magic, but men don't? And they get all upset and start buying strange things that I'm not allowed to see. And then my grandma hits me for being too nosy and tells me to leave the poor girl alone. I stopped in my tracks. I wasn't sure if I actually felt any better with him not knowing either. Uh, um... So, why does it only affect women, Lena? Well, it... I realised I had been staring down at my shoes for quite a while now. I managed to break through my embarrassment and glance up at the guy. The bastard was grinning! Clearly I'd been wrong about all that good guy nonsense. This asshole Gary was some kind of cretin who enjoyed teasing vulnerable young women. Gary, you absolute basket of- Enough kidding around. What? Gary's body language had changed completely. He was now cold and serious. It looks like we have company, little I girl. I followed his gaze. Dense forest covered our right flank and there was a large clearing to our left. Directly in front of us, however, stood a man resolutely blocking our way. He wore an overcoat and appeared to be in his early twenties. He was also fairly good looking. If you were into blue stony skin and metallic hair. Hey, I'm not here to judge. The guy was also holding a broadsword threateningly. Ah, so you're Mr. Zegladesh. Finally deciding to show your face, I see. That didn't sound right. Uh, Gary, I think it's pronounced Zel... Gladys? It's Zel Gladys. The man shouted, obviously annoyed. Oh, don't you hate it when people get your name wrong? You would be shocked to hear how many ways people can screw up the name Lena in this. I mean, seriously, the mind reels. Gary said nothing. I said nothing. Zarkadis heard us say nothing. And also said nothing in reply. Tension hung in the air. Thick as gravy. Lumpy, disagreeable gravy. Someone had to say something. That's what I said. I blurted out. Zel Gladys. So did I. Added Gary unconvincingly. My name is not important, Zelgadis shouted back. I wasn't buying it. He seemed pretty pissed off. Hello there, not important. My name's Mr. Bodyguard. You're someone's dad. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. And I'm looking after a child, so... Don't even finish that thought, Zelgadis said, fume from his lack of attention. He spoke out. I have come for the object. If you refuse to listen to reason, I'll have to come and take it by force. Choose carefully, Sophie. Wait, who's Soph? Do you know any Sophies? Not that I know of. Gary and I glanced over our shoulders to make sure there were no Sophies hiding in the bushes. Oh wait, I think- Wait, didn't you give them a false- Yeah, okay, that makes sense now. We both figured out at the same time. There were no missing Sophies. That was just the name I had given to Zolf, the mummy man from the inn a couple of days ago. The idiot must have thought I had given him my actual name, which he gave to his boss. Where is a tissue, that guy? If you're talking to me, my name's Lena, I shouted. What? Zalgadis' voice was sounding progressively more and more distraught. I said my name's Lena. Sophie was just an alias I gave to that Zolf guy, I explained. Zalgadis didn't react at all. 
We'd succeeded our strategy of throwing the opponent completely off balance, only by using the weapon of incredibly boring repartee. Oh, you laugh now, but every good warrior knows that half the battle's in the mind, and this guy's just realised that all of his intel was a bunch of hokum, meaning other things that he was confident in could have been a lie too. Who cares what your name is? A second voice queried. Whoever the speaker was, they were right behind us. I turned slowly, very, very slowly, and found myself face to body with a very hairy werewolf. Or possibly not just a werewolf. A uh, half troll, half werewolf. Werewolf. But in the current moments, the finer details were escaping me. Oh, and I mean, if they don't transform under a full moon, they just stay in animal form, then they're not technically a werewolf, they're a, a beast man. Regardless, the guy had the head of a wolf and the body of a man. He had a large scimitar slung over his shoulder. See, boss? You just need to take the goddess statue, is that right? Dilgear! Zelgar is snapped. Oof, you've done it now, boyo. Dilgear, the dumb wolf, took a few moments to put things together and realised how exactly he had screwed up. <sighs> Not a very smart boy. Oh. Uh, oops. Sorry, boss. We're supposed to put an object around them, huh? Well, it doesn't really matter, since we're going to be killing them anyhow. I took a step forward. Insulted. Excuse you? We are right fucking here. And you're not going to be the one doing the killing, buddy. You don't even know who you're dealing with. Dogear narrowed his eyes. You've got an awful big mouth for such a small pop. Let's see what you can do then. Fine, but a two-on-two -two battle isn't going to be very interesting against you clowns. We are way out of your league. One against two will give you guys a sporting chance. I said, trying to make myself as tall as possible. Go on, go ahead, Gary. Wait, what? He looked at me as if I'd just signed him up for suicide duty. Which, if you ask me, was a serious overestimation of Doogie's ability. Wait just a second there, little girl, and you can't just- Damn it, Gary, I've already explained that you have to do the fighting. What's this one-on-two nonsense, anyway? A third voice piped up. This time I'd heard this voice before. Are you trying to leave me out of the fun? The old man who had attacked my room with the trolls the previous night. He appeared and stood by Zelgadus. This time, he was equipped with a formidable-looking halibut. So impressive, in fact, I found myself wondering why he did his halibut shopping. But I decided it'd be a weird question to ask right in the middle of a battle. Whoa, 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 whoa. Three against one is not fair. Yeah. I don't know what you did to us last night, but I'm pretty sure it won't work again. He was right. We were at a serious disadvantage. Our chance of escape, let alone victory, looked pretty slim. I had to think of something. Enough waiting. Let's go. Zalgalus moved. Thrusting one hand out in front of him, he formed a dozen flare arrows. Damn it! Fuck. Gary and I leapt for cover. But a moment later, flare arrows were striking and exploding between us, filling the air with fire and smoke. We lost sight of each other. Not good. Across the flames, I could hear the high-pitched screech of clashing metal. I think it was Gary crossing blades with the enemy. I could just make out Gary's silhouette through the smoke. But I couldn't see his opponent through the haze. Gary! I called out to him. I caught a glimpse of someone's sword. And something whizzed by, barely missing me. Ah! I leapt and drew my sword from my hip. Let's just see. In the midst of the weakening flames, a form became visible before me. Just how good you are! Zell goddess. <laughs> I managed to parry his flash. I couldn't see. I lost my balance and nearly dropped my blade. Yeah. So Goddess was a pro. His every blow displayed ample speed and power. My strength wasn't going to hold out against him for long. I had no choice but to run.